This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, well, today we're going to do a very specific request and the question they received is can you demonstrate how to create fur using the Ornatrix plugin and applying V-Ray materials to it. So that's what we're going to do today, okay? So let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. <coughs> Hey guys, here we go. So, pretty basic one today. Uh, I received a request to do uh, fur using Ornatrix and uh, we're going to keep that pretty basic. We are going to apply some V-Ray materials to it and we're going to render it out using the um, Rebus Farm services so I can show you guys that they support V-Ray as well. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start in my polygon menu with a basic sphere, nothing fancy. And as we are going to apply fur to this, it doesn't have to be extremely high poly or anything because we're not going to see this fur anyway, right? So we got that. We're going to go and look at our Onatrix uh, plugin. Um, and I got quite a few open here. So let's uh, see where it is right there. And you can see that I got all my tools uh, and buttons loaded up here. And if you do not, you need to go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. And then you need to scroll down and look for the Ornatrix plugin and make sure that all the checks are checked. So let's see where mine is. Uh, like I said, quite a few of these going on. And got a bit distracted there by that window thing. Here you go. Okay, cool. So uh, with that all loaded up, what we're going to do is we're going to select our sphere and we're going to basically just hit that front button up here where we have the choice to either add feathers or add fur. So I'm just gonna simply click on that fur button and hit create, which will create this awful looking mess right here. Okay, but that's fine. As we do that, we got this uh, window set up here on the left. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the edit guide shape node there. We're gonna hit control A for our attribute editor. And we're gonna go in and we're gonna uh, tweak this a little bit. Like I said, nothing fancy, just to show you a few tools and slides. Okay, so we're going to go to the guides from Mesh Node 1, and here are a couple of important controls. First of all, the point count. Now, if you increase that, you hardly see a difference, but it's uh, a big impact on your system. So I'm going to set that to, let's say, 5. That would be fine. Okay. Now, the length of these is pretty important, of course, and you can see that you can go very high and very low. And I'll do something like this so we can see it okay. And of course, we also are able to set the D count. I'll zoom in some more. So here, if you slide that up, you can make that very dense or not dense at all. And what I'll do is I'll do a quick V-Ray IPR render. First, I'll drag select this and right click and go to assign new material. I'm going to apply a V-Ray material because we are going to render in V-Ray. And I'm going to select the V-Ray material hair 3, okay, which is very suitable. And here in the attribute editor, you can tweak all, uh, all the color settings and so forth, okay. So that's one. Two is uh, if we want to see anything in our render, we need some lighting, okay. So we're going to go to our V-Ray tab, and I'm just going to select this dome light right here. So right now, if I were to IPR render this, I'm going to go to my render settings, make sure I'm in V-Ray. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are, and I'm simply going to hit the IPR button. Okay. Well, you can see that it's starting to render there, and it actually looks quite nice. Uh, regarding that we didn't do anything basically to uh, the render settings. I'll just move that over. You can see that that works quite well. Okay, so we're going to go back. We're going to select this guy and let's go back to this guy and open up our attribute editor. I'll just close these down for a sec. Hit control A. So again, uh, the length, uh, we'll tweak that a little bit. I want the, uh, the count to be way up make it nice and dense we'll set that to a thousand and what i like to do is change the randomness and what's cool about that is when all these hairs are the exact same size you don't get the dynamic lighting effect 
However, when you bring this down a little bit, and we'll just quickly do a new IPR so you can see it, it gives a very cool effect because uh, lighting responds differently and it looks a bit more, I don't know, fuzzy if you want to call it that. Okay, so we're going to start this guy and we're going to have a quick look at our uh, render settings. Uh, again, nothing fancy, so we're just going to minimize this guy. We're going to go to our render settings. We're going to make sure that we've got the V-Ray selected. And I'm going to go down here and see what I want to change. Now, I want the um, dimensions for my render to be 1920 by 1080. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Um, anything I need to change here? Yes, I want uh, a JPEG image as my output. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Uh, in the animation tab, uh, I need to set this to standard. Okay, otherwise it won't render out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do start frame one and frame one because I only have a still render there and it's required to uh, to do the render in uh, at Rebus Farm. Okay, so uh, I'll leave this all alone. I got the right camera selected. Resolution looks okay. We'll jump to the V-Ray tab. Um, I'm going to set this to OpenGL, although it's not going to be rendered on my system. Uh, let's see, I'll set this to 1024. Uh, I want this to be 16 bit. This I'm all going to leave alone. Global illumination, I'm going to turn that off. And uh, everything else I'm going to leave alone. Okay. So with that all done, I should be ready to render this out on Rebus Farm. Um, and they provide the plugin that also does a check. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to look for my uh, Rebus Farm tab here and I'm going to run a test. So I'm going to hit this button right there and I'm going to do a smart check to see if anything's wrong before I upload it. And uh, let's see, uh, it says I'm rendering one frame only. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's just a warning. That's good. So let's see. Um, Okay, I got one error message here saying I need to save my scene before I export it, which is uh, pretty important. So that's good. And uh, let's see what else. Okay, it says that only frame zero can be rendered as a single frame. All right, so I need to start that at frame range zero. Okay, so we'll do all that. So I'm going to go to a uh, file and save scene as, and I'll call it. Furry Ball 2, I did some testing there, so I'll say that on my desktop. And there we go. And then I'm going to go back into my render settings. And now you can see how important that is that I got that smart check. Otherwise, I would be rendering and, you know, it wouldn't be working and so forth. So I'm going to set this at start frame 0 and end frame 1. Okay. So let's try this again. Smart check. And we're all good. Okay, so I'm going to click on upload to have my scene uploaded to the Rebus Farm uh, site and it says that it has started. So let's click on that. And the upload is done, looks like. And when you simply click on that, you will get this here. Okay, now this is one that I did before, so uh, a test, so I'll just get rid of that. So this is what we got. We got our furryball2.mb, which is our Maya uh, file, and uh, it looks all good. I have a zero and one, so I'll have two images, but that's fine. And it looks like it's all ready to go. So I'm simply going to hit this play button and then the render will start. All right. Okay, rendering started. It shouldn't take too long, but I'll just uh, pause the video anyway, so you guys don't have to look at it. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, guys, the render seems to be complete, which is uh, good. And what uh, we'll do is we'll uh, open this guy up and see what we got. Or what I can do actually is just open it here in my folder. I'll just uh, pull that file up. Hang on. 
Alright guys, here's our render. It uh, turned out okay, I think, especially considering we uh, pretty much ran through the render without paying too much attention to tweaking the settings. Uh, just to illustrate that it's uh, possible and actually quite easy to create fur with Ornotrix, to apply V-Ray material to it and to render it using the services of Rebus Farm. Okay. So as this was a requested video, hopefully um, it's okay. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. And that said, see you guys next time. Bye.